So repeat for the camera then. You, are you guys okay with that? I'd like yeah. to share this information. I think that's what we're here for, yeah? I'm fine. Okay. So, good morning. Or good high noon. I'm Sonia Sophia, and I'm here to teach you EFT, which is a survival skill for the new paradigm. Teaching you how to shift your experience of reality with your own consciousness using your hands and your mind. Um, basically, we're going to be stimulating the meridian points of the body with your fingertips, tapping on the electrical circuit of your body. Okay, you know about chakras, right? Chakras are the energy field that you give and receive energy from. But the chakras is the field. The meridians are actually the wires that that cosmic energy enters into you and then funnels down into a usable, manageable way with all your glands and organs and your tissues. Your meridians are mapped out in your body. It's one huge long thread, just like if you were going to wire a house. It'd be all on one long piece of wire with branches coming off of that wire. Your meridians are the same way. If you have shock or trauma or fear, or you imagine that you're going to have shock and trauma and fear, because something bad's going to happen because it happened before, and you go into a state of distress inside, your body tends to shut down and circuits shut off. Just like if you had too much energy going through your house at once, your circuit breaker would hit before your house burned or exploded, right? So it would flip off the circuits. But if you didn't know where your circuit breaker was, you'd think that your house was broken. And you'd be like, well, we're cooking over a Bunsen burner in our bedroom now because we don't have power in the kitchen or the bathroom or the living room. We don't really have friends over anymore. Okay, when you're distressed inside, you act about like that. Don't really want people to see who you are behind those eyes. Don't really want to have sex with people because then all your stuff's going to come up because you're going to be close to them. And as soon as you feel love, then all your family patterns come out and you start interacting with each other as your family interacted with themselves or with you, right? Or you remember your ex-relationship or you start thinking about what you're not able to do because in school they told you you had ADD or they told you this or they told you that. And so we start getting self-conscious and insecure. Those feelings are the product, the, the cause of that is short circuit in the nervous system. Okay, that stuff, you can talk about it and talk about it, and you can understand it, but it doesn't make it go away usually, right? Anybody ever go to therapy? It's beautiful to have someone with love sitting there listening to your problem, but do you, does it change your problem? Usually not. Usually it can help you understand it, but then if you can't stop reacting that way, you feel bad about now I know what I'm doing but I can't stop it so now I feel even worse because yeah. I feel guilty and bad and wrong on top of phobic and whatever right fearful so EFT actually takes the distress out of your nervous system and you're gonna have a living experience of that today where you're gonna pick something that really bothers you we're gonna do this process on it and you're gonna see for yourself how much better you feel afterwards What's cool is that you don't have to believe in this. I didn't believe in it. I wouldn't believe in anything until I tried it. If it doesn't work for me, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't exist. It's like, whatever, it works for other people. If it doesn't work for me, forget it. So I'm only teaching you things that actually work for me, and I've taught thousands of people all over the world. Just got back from Europe, taught in Spain, taught in Germany, taught in London. I teach all over America, okay? And I'm watching the emails come in, and I do trainings and train people how to do this because you guys can go home and actually have a tool after one day of being here that's going to shift your reality permanently if you'll keep using it. And you don't have to keep using it on the same subject. It's not like yoga where it's like, well, I feel good and then I stop doing yoga and then I feel bad again, which is beautiful. I love yoga, right? But I used to have to do it because my body hurt all the time. But now I do it just because it's fun but not because I have any more physical pain left, or anxiety, or neuroses, or insecurity, and I don't have an ugly voice in my head that follows me around and tells me how inadequate I am all the time. I don't compare myself to others, almost never. And rarely do I feel unworthy of anything, and it's a beautiful feeling, okay? And the way I became that way is through this process, even after 20 years of personal growth work, I still had the same complexes, pretty much, maybe a slightly lighter version than I always did. So 
this is going to give you a tool to work on yourself, whether it's your personality that you'd like to reform and heal, or physical pain, or emotional pain, or traumatic memories, child abuse, sexual abuse, anything that happened to you. Um, relationship trauma, fear about the future, you can work on all your world changes 2012, freak out with this stuff. Okay, so whatever you pointed at, it's going to make a difference. And I know that sounds almost too good to be true, like, well, how can it be like a one-stop wonder whack, you know? But it's because it's based on unconditional love, and you know instinctually that love is the answer, and it does heal everything it's applied to. And they usually tell you that you should be loving, but they don't really tell you how. They're like, drop your mind, be compassionate. It's like, drop my mind, but my mind's like chewing on me all day long. Right? And stressing, stressing, stressing. How do you drop that? I can tell it to drop, but do you ever tell yourself to stop feeling a certain way? Does it work? No. Stop feeling angry. Okay, now I feel really, really, really angry. <laughs> I'm quiet. Which is worse and more dangerous, right? So this is what you're going to do when you feel angry or when you feel scared or when you feel sad or when you feel panicked or when you feel insecure or when you feel sick. I healed my ankle that was kind of sore as I was hiking up and down the hills yesterday by tapping with my backpack on, didn't stop, just shifted my energy field and healed my ankle in mid-process. Okay? So what this means is that if you happen to be in a place where there isn't any medicine and somebody's freaking out or you're in a natural disaster zone, or there's a tornado coming by or the power just went off or something weird is happening, somebody just barged in your house and you don't know what to do, you can go into the other room and you can shift your energy and come out calm and peaceful and ready to take positive, doable action from a centered, grounded kind of yogi place. Even if you aren't actually a yogi by day, normally you can do it quickly. Okay? So we're going to be tapping on the meridians of the body. I'm going to quickly go over where those points are. Um, I'm going to go over them and over them and over them. So it's like square dancing. I'll just call it out and then you're going to go over them. And then we're going to find a subject that you want to apply some healing to today. And then I'm going to talk you through that process, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is learn the points. And the points are um, going to stimulate every major meridian line in your body. So you're basically going to get a whole flood of um, electrical current running through you. Bursts of heat, light, and sound as you percussively tap on your meridians. So I like to start my sessions here. Different EFT practitioners start in different places. And some people use slightly different points. But they're all basically the same process. So feel around in your chest, somewhere in your upper pec muscle, underneath your collarbones. There's going to be a kind of a tender spot in there. Can you find it? Press on it. Massage it. I like to start here because it does two things. It clears something called psychological reversal, which means my head thinks it's a good idea and my heart says no, or my heart usually says yes, and my brain says no way. Okay? In so a particular just, um, direction? Doesn't matter. You're just going to stimulate this and keep moving the energy here. This helps open up the heart. Beautiful size. Mm -hmm. You can do one or the other. I like to do both at the beginning. You're wired symmetrically, so it doesn't matter which side of your body uh, you're working the points on, and you can alternate or you can do both at the same time. Okay, good. He's doing it and videographing. Okay, good. Um, the next point is at the beginning of your eyebrow. So take a couple of fingers and find the very beginning of your eyebrow. Okay, it's not your third eye. It's the beginning of your eyebrows, right where they get furry. Gently tap. Okay, good. Slide down your eyebrows, now tap the edge of your temples. Right at the bony side of your eye socket. Good. Now cheekbones, front of your cheekbones. Right where they stick out the most in front. Nice, so you're, all wor you're already working gallbladder and bladder and stomach points. Okay, now these points isn't like one point does one thing, it's one point does a whole circuit with lots of different outlets on that circuit. They're just called certain meridians, but they really do a lot more than that one point. Tap under your nose. This point, for example, goes all the way up your face, down the back of your head, down your spine, and tucks under your tailbone. It's called your governing meridian. Okay? Under the lips. 
does the opposite side of you, down the front of your body, wraps around under your genitals to connect to the point you just did. So you notice when you're kissing someone, you're stimulating here, but where are you feeling it? Mm-hmm. Feeling it down here and up here. Oh, could this be the one? And are you my true love? And oh, baby, it's down here. Okay. Front of the chest. Put your hand in kind of a U shape, and you can get both points at the same time. It's right underneath your clavicle. It's right under your collarbone. There's a little dip. If you were wearing a necktie, you'd sort of straighten your necktie down here. Okay. Tap down <clears throat> to your sternum, to the bottom of your little heart. People like to stash things down there thinking no one will ever look there because you're never going to let anyone in there again. So it's a really great place to clear out if you want the fullness of your pure heart back and available, which I guarantee you is restorable. Okay? Good. Front of your rib cage, where your ribs jut out the most in front. There's a little protrusion where your ribs curve out. Come join us. Okay? Is this a sore spot on anybody? Bit. Yeah, that probably means you're a really nice person. Because <laughs> what this point, when it's sore, in any of the points when they're sore, you need to give them a little extra tapping, a little extra attention. When this is sore, it often means that you've got some repressed anger because you're being nice and pleasing people. She's laughing. I'm not going to look. That you may please people instead of telling them how you really feel. Okay? Or saying no. Tap the side of the rib cage. It's the side at nipple height straight across. If you're wearing a bra, this is where your bra strap would be. You can tap with the back of your knuckles or you can cross your arms and tap like this. Okay? Whatever is comfortable for you. Good. Inside of the wrist. So you just worked gallbladder and liver points and now you're working the heart and pericardium straight across the wristband making sure you get the wrist bone. Okay? Side of the thumb, put your hand like you're going to karate chop something. You're doing the top edge of your thumb right at the thumbnail. Index finger, same place. Good. Middle finger, same place. You're working some intestine points. Now you're also clearing the energy around your second chakra, your genitals. Which is why you use that finger to tell someone to go make love to themselves quickly to rebalance themselves. Because <laughs> you know that's what they need. Okay, outside of the fourth finger, lift your hand up into the outer edge of your fourth finger. Some people do the back edge of the hand right here, but I tap a lot and the skin is a little bit thin and delicate and there's some veins there. So I like to use the point at the fingertip here where it originates. Okay, this helps clear. It's called the triple warmer, and it clears your relationship to self and others. So self to rainbow, self to temperature, self to what I'm about to eat, self to what I'm thinking about tomorrow, self to person. Where are you tapping on the fingers? Outside just this. of the, yeah, on the outside uh -huh. of that one. Okay. Yes, yeah, the only one that's on the opposite side here. Okay, back to the inside edge of the pinky finger. It's another heart point. And now you're going to do the outer edge of your hand where you'd karate chop something right here on the outside edge of your hand. And this also helps clear psychological resistance. Okay, it's really good for people who are stubborn. Okay, and stubborn is the same energy as persistent. It just means that your goal is different. Stubborn is when you're locked onto doing something you know is not good for you. Persistent is when you're locked onto knowing something, doing something that is good for you. So don't worry if you're stubborn, you've already got the strength, you just need to change the goal. Okay? Tap the top of the head. Over the ears, all over the head. You've got about a hundred little points up there. Okay, and this opens up your crown, your energetic connection with the cosmos, plus your, your connection with the rest of your body. It kind of puts the antenna up, so to speak. Okay, and tunes you. Great, so you can just relax. You've just learned all the points, congratulations. We're gonna do that uh, over and over for the next little while here. Um, I want you to feel free to drink some water if you need to drink while we're sitting here. Um, I have some sunblock if anyone needs it. I do. Where? Okay. The big white guy? Yeah, put it 